This weekend, California high school track stars going for gold at the state championships, but some girls will have to race against trans athletes. Female athletes and parents feeling helpless and powerless. And now turning to our next guest for help in the fight for fairness in women's sports. Joining us now, Independent Women's Forum spokeswoman, former NCAA swimmer, Riley Gaines. Riley, great to see you. What are you hearing from the female athletes and their parents? Because they are being silenced, particularly out in California, because you get called transphobic, you name it. I, what I've been hearing, I've had parents, female athletes, um, even coaches from California reaching out to me, and they're distraught. They're defeated. They have no idea what to do. I've had parents call me crying, watching their daughters on the sidelines go, when the gun goes off next to a boy, and guess what? Getting beat. Because this is the same old tale. These are mediocre men. One of the, the males, his name is Athena Ryan, competing against the girls. Very similar to my situation with Leah Thomas, this male was ranked thir 63rd last year when competing among the men. And of course, now qualifies for state. Um, with the women, which is actually going on today. But the message I'm receiving from these parents and these kids, they're silenced, they're fearful of retaliation if they do speak out based off of what their schools are telling them and their, their governing bodies, and they don't know what to do, but they, they know, of course, that this is unfair and wrong. And I imagine through you they see they're not alone and they know other people are calling you, but as they put that call in and they're distraught and they're tear-ridden, what advice do you give them, Riley? It's actually pretty unique. I'm able to connect these parents together mm. to um, whether that's on email threads, through social media, through text. So they know they're not alone because that's crucial. Um, a lot of their feelings, they come to me and they think they're the only ones feeling this way. But again, the overwhelming majority of not just female athletes, the overwhelming majority of the general public, even the overwhelming majority of the Democratic Party knows this is wrong. Um, so I'm able to connect them, put them in touch with each other, and of course we work together to move forward in strategizing and what to do and how to communicate with their coaches and these governing bodies, and ultimately the, the people in charge of America, the leaders of this country, of course even the Biden administration, are totally disregarding these girls and their privacy and their safety and their feelings and their fairness. I listened to Hannah Aronsman being interviewed by Dana Perino earlier in the week. She dropped out of cyclocross after the Nationals last season after she lost to a biological male. She was actually flanked on both sides by biological men. And she said it was part of it was it wasn't just the unfair advantage, but in that sport, it was the media and the sponsors that put pressure on her to say nothing because you jeopardize not just your team position, your sponsorships, but even your job outside of the sport if you said anything. Absolutely. I think we know women's sports, of course, it doesn't generate as much revenue and as much money as men's sports. And so these women, especially in smaller sports such as cycling, we're seeing this rampant in disc golf in these smaller mm -hmm. sports where you rely on prize money. This is their job. This is what they do to put food on their table. And so I understand, of course, why they're scared to speak out. Um, this is how they make you know, ends meet. And if they, they risk that, they're risking their, their ultimately their livelihood. And that's more than just themselves. They have children, they have families. And so I understand, but of course, we have to be willing to make sacrifices for this to ultimately come to an end. Yeah, Riley, in, a, in an adjacent topic, the controversy for Target continues. The company now partnering with a pro-trans K-12 education group, focusing on getting districts to adopt policies that will keep parents in the dark on the child's in-school gender transition. The group's uh, Gessling is also advocating for trans athletes to compete in girls' sports. The very problem that you're fighting, you have Target that's pushing money in to get more boys competing in girls' sports. What message do you have for Target and their partnership with this group that's trying to undermine girls in athletics? Well, to be totally frank, they're following academia. They're following, again, our government and what the Biden administration is doing. They're following what universities and institutions and other woke large organizations and companies such as um, Hershey's. And, of course, we've seen what's happened to Bud Light and Anheuser-Busch and Tampax and Ulta and, and all of these different brands who have pursued this. 
and look at how it's affected them. How can you see what happened to Bud Light? Look at their result. I think they lost somewhere between, I think, $15.7 billion and ultimately make that same decision to do the exact same thing. They know 99% of their consumers aren't, aren't on board with this, yet they're choosing to do that. And if I was a shareholder in this, um, this organization, this company, this would not fly with me. This is ridiculous. Of course, these large organizations, they don't follow the red or the blue, and they follow the green. That's what they follow, and, and we see where that's leading them. Riley, thank you so much for being here. Always, Riley Gaines. Of course. Thank you. Strong and outspoken. Thank you, Riley.